is to take a look at exponential functions. So exponential functions are a way of tracking growth or decay. So say you have a, a, a bacteria population that doubles every, let's say every hour. So they start off with 100 bacteria. An hour later, there are now 200 bacteria because the 100 doubled. Now, an hour later, the 200 doubles. So now you have 400. An hour later, the 400 doubles into 800. There is a pattern of how much it grows, but it's not a constant rate. Therefore, when we graph this information, we don't get a straight line, we get a curve. And that is because what we do is, in exponential functions, our input, we previously learned that from linear function, is now our exponent value. So exponential functions are set up in the function of x, or this is also means the y, or the output, the answer, is calculated by taking a, is your initial value, how much you start out with. Then that is being multiplied by the growth factor, okay? Now, in this case, b is a combination of two values. We get b by taking 1 and adding our rate to it. This 1 represents our initial value. If we start out with amount, an amount, we have 100% of it. And then we are either growing or decreasing from that starting value. So the b element we get from adding our rate of growth or decay to 1, representing the initial value of 100%. Then, x is our input, and this is oftentimes a value representing an amount of time that has passed, or how many times this combination needs to get calculated. So to solve this, we take our growth factor and we raise it to the exponential value indicated for our input, when we get that answer, we then multiply that product by what our initial value is, and it's able to let us calculate how much a value, a product, an item has increased or decreased over time. So if we have the exponential function, the function of x is 4 times 1.25 to the x power, we look at our b. Well, we learned that b is a combination of 1 plus the growth rate. So to find out what our rate of growth or decay is, we actually subtract 1 from here to find out what our r was. Okay? So, for example, if I set this up into an equation, I know that I get 1.25 by taking 1 and adding it to the rate. So, in order to solve for the rate, I have to take 1 away from each side, which leaves me with 0.25. Well, rates are always going to be a percentage. So, what is 0.25 as a percentage? 25%. So, if we start off with 4, because A, the, the value in front, of here is our initial value. We start off with 4 and then from there every time we calculate it based on whatever the x would be we are increasing our value by 25 percent every time. Um, so some other things that we can get to know with this as far as graphing goes. Alright, so we know some things about intercepts, right? It's where our line crosses through our y-axis. So I have, say I have a graph here and I happen to be graphing my line. Okay, I need to find out what this spot is. And uh, guess what? It's our initial value because a rule of exponents. If I have, as intercepts, we always know to get onto that y-intercept, my x is 0. x, 0, if I have b to the 0, the 0 exponent means this number divided by itself. Okay? So if I have b divided by b, well, what's any number over itself divided by? It simplifies to 1. 
So B turns into 1 because it had 0 for an exponent. So then if I have 1 and it's supposed to get multiplied by A, 1 times A, guess what? It's A. So for this function, 0, A is our y-intercept. Well, that leaves us with 4. So when we're trying to graph our exponential functions, this initial value lets me know where my line is crossing through the y-axis. The other thing is this tells me how quickly my graph is going to go up or go down if it's, if it's growth or decay. Okay? We know from linear functions that a slope of 1 is a constant rate, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. It's not too steep, not too shallow, it just goes like this, okay? It's pretty constant. So when this b value is close to 1, it means I'm really not changing that much from that initial value because the b is our growth factor. So if I have something like 1.01. .01. That means I only have a growth rate of 1%. That's not a whole lot. So if that gets graphed, that's going to be a very, very, barely perceptible curve. So the farther away we get from that one hole, that initial value of keeping it constant, the greater the growth is. So if I have 1.4 for my B value, that means I have a 40% growth each time my values are calculated, which is much greater than 0.1. If I have 0.1.8, guess what? That is really close to 2. That's almost a doubling value. So the graph of this would look something more like the line that I already have there. This is going to curve sharply. So the farther away from 1 that your B value is, the sharper the curve and the steeper the rate of change is. This can also apply when I have less than one. Okay. So if I have 4 and 0.75 to the x, whenever my b value is less than one less than one point something or one whole, it means I have a decay rate because the initial amount isn't there anymore. I have less than that whole amount. So again, to use this earlier formula, 0.75 equals 1 plus the rate. When I take 1 away from each, it looks like a 7, sorry. When I take a 1 away from each side, if I have one whole and I'm supposed to find the difference between it and 75, we'll say cents, just so that we have something we're used to, I have a difference of 0.25. But my negative was greater than my positive, so when I take this 0.25 negative and convert it into a percent, it means I have a 25% loss. I have a decay rate, so every time it's calculated, I lose 25%. So the value that remains for my B is actually telling me the percentage of what remains because I had a percentage taken out each time it was calculated. So the idea of the curve of my graph, in this case, instead of going up, my curve is going to start up high and then go down. And the steepness of that decline is determined by what the number for my B is. So if I have 0.3 versus 0.9. Which one is closer to one whole? 0.9. This is going to be a shallower slope because the difference between 0.9 or 90% and 100% is only a 10% decline. So that amount is going to be declining at a much shallower rate. Okay? Then 0.3 is really close to zero instead of 100. So it's declining rapidly. It's a 70% decline every time that value is calculated. So it's going to be a very sharp, and then it's going to gradually decrease because there's less there to keep reducing and reducing. When we start off with a larger value, it's a quick drop, and then that drop slowly declines because there's just really not that much left. So we look at our B value to determine the grade of our curve, 
we look at our a, or our initial value, to find out where our graph cuts through our y-axis, and then we can make some logical determinations on which function equations we're given are going to match the algebraic functions that they give us.